A crowd becomes a mob when it is given direction and purpose by its leaders, and when it is psychologically conditioned to carry out that purpose with violence. Prevention of mob violence is the responsibility of local law enforcement agencies. If they cannot maintain law and order and protect life and property, military units may be ordered by higher authority to perform riot control duty. Measures of force of varying severity are available to the military commander for quelling civil disturbances. Of these, well-trained and well-disciplined units in riot control formations have been found to be successful. There are three basic riot control formations here demonstrated by a platoon. There is the wedge, designed to penetrate and split a mob into segments. The line, designed to hold a mob in place, deny it access to an area, or push it straight back. And the echelon, designed to turn a mob in either open or built up areas. Any formation may be executed from a column or from another formation. Several variations of these formations are possible. All of them are extremely flexible and can be used by a squad, a platoon, or a company or larger unit. Three positions of the rifle with fixed bayonet are used. At safe port, the bayonet is up high and can be seen by everyone in the mob. This position gives an impression of a greater number of troops than are actually present. Safe guard is a position of semi-readiness used with normal cadence of 120 steps per minute. This position is maintained during the preliminary stages of an advance against a mob or when the mob is giving ground. The on-guard position of complete readiness is assumed just before resistance is met. The bayonet is angled at throat level and the cadence is reduced to 60 steps per minute with a characteristic stomp of the left foot. Since the squad is the smallest basic tactical unit, let us first see how it functions in forming the line, the wedge, and the echelon. All three formations are done virtually by the numbers. Prior count off has established where each man in the squad will go when executing any of the formations. First to be demonstrated is the line. The number two man is the base, with odd-numbered men to his left and even-numbered to his right. The preparatory command for the squad line is, squad as skirmishers. The squad leader gives the hand signal for the formation and then points to where he wants his base man, number two. On the command of execution, move, the number two man takes his position on the spot indicated by the squad leader. At one pace intervals, the even-numbered men form on the right of the base man. The odd-numbered men form on his left. The squad leader takes his position where he can best observe and control the formation. If no interval is specified in the command, the unit automatically assumes a one pace interval. If the squad leader desires, he can, however, command two paces and his line will be extended to cover a greater width. The squad wedge is also formed on the number two man, with odd numbered men to his left and even numbered to his right. The squad leader gives the preparatory command and hand signal for the formation. He indicates the spot where he wants his point man and gives the command of execution. Each man is one pace to the side and one pace to the rear of the man in front. The squad leader takes his position within the wedge where he can best observe and control the formation. If there is an assistant squad leader, he is slightly to the rear of the squad leader and on the other side of the formation.
From the column, the squad may also form an echelon to turn a mob either to the right or to the left. Notice that in contrast with the line and the wedge formations, the echelon is formed with the squad members in numerical order with number two as the base man. After the preparatory command and hand signal, the squad leader indicates where he wants the base man and commands, move. Whether the formation is an echelon right or left, the number two man is in the base position and the men are in numerical order. The squad is now ready for action. When troops on riot control duty are brought into an area by truck, They'll dismount and assemble at some point out of sight of the mob. The mob doesn't see these preparations. Instead of seeing a unit getting ready, it'll be confronted by one ready for action there is a tremendous psychological difference. The unit is ordered to fix bayonets. Since a mob reacts to psychological stimuli, Massed rifles with fixed bayonets have considerable effect. The troops count off to be ready to execute riot control formations. Weapons other than the rifle are carried as needed. The platoon headquarters normally includes the platoon leader, a selected marksman with an M14A1 rifle, a radio operator with his radio set, and a messenger. The platoon comes into the view of the mob, marching at the standard cadence of 120 steps per minute. When it reaches a reasonably safe distance from the mob, it is halted. From this point, the platoon leader has both time and space in which to bring his men into whatever formation will best meet the requirements of the situation if the mob does not disperse in the allotted time. Riot control formations of the platoon are usually executed from the column. If the unit has already assumed one formation, it can move directly into another. When the platoon leader gives the hand signal for the wedge formation, the squad leaders of the first and fourth squads order, follow me, while the other two order, stand fast. The platoon leader indicates where he wants the point and commands, move. The first and fourth squads move out at safe port and the squad leaders give their respective commands for echelon left and echelon right, move. The number two man of the fourth squad will become the point of the wedge. When the move by the first and fourth squads is nearly completed, the squad leaders of the second and third squads order, follow me pointing to the rear elements of the wedge already being formed. The echelon right of the third squad joins the fourth, and the echelon left of the second joins the first. Squad leaders and assistant squad leaders are in the same relative positions as in the squad echelon formation. The platoon leader and his headquarters personnel form within the wedge.
Let's repeat the formation of the four squad platoon wedge from a column. The first and fourth squads move out to form echelons left and right, respectively, joined at a 90 degree angle. The number two man of the fourth squad becomes the point of the formation. Then the second and third squads join the first and fourth, respectively, as extensions. The platoon headquarters takes its place. To obtain a platoon wedge from the column, with the second and third squads in general support, the command is, platoon wedge, second and third squads in support, move. The first and fourth squads move forward. The squad leaders of the second and third squads stand fast until called forward. Notice, to go into general support, the command is, in support. If the platoon leader decides to bring his support out to protect his flanks, his command is second and third squads in lateral support. Before the command of execution, the squad leaders command left flank and right flank respectively. At the command move, the second and third squads move out to the flanks, facing in the direction of the wedge's drive. From the platoon wedge, with second and third squads in lateral support, the platoon leader may form the full platoon wedge to cover a wider area by commanding, extend the wedge, move. On the double, the second and third squads swing out to extend the wedge. The two squads in general support of a platoon wedge can be brought to close support by the command Second and third squads in close support, move. The second squad forming an echelon left and the third an echelon right, executing a wedge and covering the intervals in the leading wedge. The platoon wedge with two squads in close support is very impressive. The formation of a wedge in a three-squad platoon is only slightly different from what we have already seen. On the command, platoon wedge move, the second squad forms a squad wedge with a number two man as base man at the spot indicated by the platoon leader. The odd numbered men move to his left and the even numbered to his right. The first and third squads form echelons left and right respectively the first extending the left of the wedge, the third extending the right. From the column to form a platoon line, the platoon leader commands, platoon as skirmishers, move. The second and third squads move forward followed by the first and fourth. The second squad is the base and establishes the line at the position indicated by the platoon leader. Each squad forms a line on its number two man. The first squad moves to the left flank of the second and the fourth squad to the right flank of the third. The first, third, and fourth squads then close and dress on the second. The line will hold a mob in place, deny it access to an area, or push it straight back. The command, platoon as skirmishers, second and third squads in support, move, will produce a platoon line of the first and fourth squads with a number two man of the fourth squad as the base man of the formation. The second and third squads will be in general support. To provide lateral support, the command is, second and third squads lateral support, move. This will protect the formation's flanks. To move the lateral support to close support, the command is, second and third squads close support, move. The second and third squads then move up to fill the intervals of the first and fourth squads and come to on guard. To form a platoon echelon from the column, the platoon leader gives the command and points to the position the lead squad will take.
on the command of execution, the first squad moves out to the designated spot, followed immediately by the second, third, and fourth squads. Each man is one pace to the side and one to the rear of the man in front. Platoon headquarters moves to the center behind the formation. Remember, the echelon is the only formation where the squads and squad members remain in numerical order. In the echelon right, the first squad, followed by the second, third, and fourth squads, form the echelon which will push or turn a mob to the right. An echelon left is executed in reverse numerical order, with the fourth squad leading, followed by the third, second, and first. Note the position of the number two men. This formation, when moving against a mob, will turn it to the left. To obtain the platoon echelon right, with second and third squads in general support, the platoon leader commands, platoon echelon right, Second and third squads in support move. The first and fourth squads move out to form the echelon. Second and third squads stand fast until the echelon is formed, then move to their general support position with the platoon leader. With a part of his unit in general support, as shown, the platoon leader has the flexibility to move them to close or lateral support of the assault element if it should be found necessary to do so. Lateral support of only one flank of an echelon may be required. If it is an echelon left, the command would be platoon echelon left. First squad in lateral support to the left, move. To move the platoon from any formation to the column, the men are brought to safe port. And the command given, platoon assemble. Following the preparatory command, the platoon headquarters moves into position and the squad leaders move to the head of their respective squads. On the command of execution, move, the squad members fall in, in numerical order, and the platoon column is restored. When encountering large mobs, it may be advantageous to employ vehicles as well as foot troops in riot control formations. While the basic formations remain the same, the vehicles add strength and have great psychological impact on a mob. Barriers of barbed wire may be constructed and mounted across the front of the vehicles as protection. Certain other precautions should be taken when using vehicles. If there is insufficient time to remove the windshields, they will usually be lowered to reduce hazard. In some instances, however, vehicles on patrol in riot areas may have windshields up for the protection of personnel. The commander rides in vehicle number one and communicates by radio and hand signals. Here, he orders the formation of a platoon line. On the command of execution, the number two vehicle moves out around the lead vehicle to the right to assume the base position of the line. Vehicle number three takes its position to the left and number four to the right. Enough room has been left for the squads to form their line between the vehicles and on their flanks. The number one vehicle moves up behind number two. 
foot troops in the formation walk as near the front corners of the vehicles as possible to prevent rioters from attacking their sides and rear. The first squad covers the left flank of vehicle number three, and the fourth squad covers the right flank of vehicle number four. The second and third squads cover the intervals between the vehicles. To form a wedge, vehicle two is the base, with vehicle three to its left rear, and vehicle four to its right rear. The first and fourth squads in echelon cover the intervals between the vehicles. The second and third squads provide flank protection. Vehicle number one is within the wedge. As in all echelon formations, the vehicles, as well as the individual squads, remain in numerical order. In this platoon echelon right, the number two vehicle is the lead vehicle in the formation. The first squad becomes its flank support, and the fourth squad the flank support for the number four vehicle. The second and third squads cover the intervals between the vehicles. In an echelon left, the number two vehicle is still the lead vehicle, but the fourth squad is now the lead squad. When a full company is used, the same three basic riot control formations apply. We will demonstrate the use of the company with a company line in depth. Company size formations usually start from the column. To form a company line in depth, the company commander orders Company as skirmishers in depth. The individual platoon leaders give their platoons the command, platoon as skirmishers, and the company commander orders, move. On the command of execution, the platoons form individual lines. With adequately trained personnel, the three basic riot control formations, the line, the wedge, the echelon, and their numerous variations have proven themselves time and again as reliable means for dispersing a mob, restoring law and order, and protecting life and property. <laughs>